Well, the presidential rally of the All Progressives Congress has taken place in Ilori in Kwara State. Its candidate, Bola Tinubu, charged the people of the state to vote for him and all APC candidates in the elections. Tinubu and his entourage were greeted by a crowd of supporters that thronged Metropolitan Square, the venue of the rally. Tinubu says Kwara has been enjoying freedom and progress under the leadership of Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak. We congratulate you for your freedom. You have PBC. You know what to do. If you don't know, don't bring fingerprint. Don't bring fingerprint. With what we have seen today, Well, Dr. Dan Ladibako is a member of the All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council, and he joins us now in the studio mm -hmm. for more on the party's uh, campaigns. Thank you so much yes. for joining us on the news tonight. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm welcome. delighted to be here. So the train has moved to the state of Harmony, yeah. Kwara State, oh, oh, not central right. Nigeria. But politically speaking, when it comes to the APC, uh, it, there doesn't seem to be harmony between top leaders of the party in the state. I'm talking about the governor and mm -hmm. the minister of information, uh, Lai Mohammed, who some say was conspicuously absent from the rally today. Uh, don't you think that disharmony, in the state of harmony, could cost mm -hmm. APC its fortunes for the state? First of all, um, I thank uh, both of you for allowing me be a guest on your show, um, especially the one time uh, Nigeria Ma Media Merit Award newscaster of the year, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, Ngozi, who I have known for upwards of 30 years. Mm -hmm. and now uh, you, when you had to put it out when there. When Adesua <laughs> was on uh, <laughs> Silverbird and started <laughs> nicely, I'm happy to see both of you have grown. Thank you. I Thank mean, you. really, really grown. And I'm pleasantly surprised at the quality of delivery, the presence, and the thought process and the articulation of your ideas. Thank you. Thank the you. second part is that I flew to Sokoto mm -hmm. um, two he days ago his PVC. Mm -hmm. to go and get my PVC. Right. Yay. So I will join the campaign. If you don't have your PVC <laughs> yet, please go and look for a way to get, get your PVC, PVC because uh, this is mine. Great. And I had to spend 48 hours because my polling booth is where they brought my t PVC mm -hmm. and I had to go and get it. Great. Um, with the matter of harmony and disharmony, mm -hmm. I think that, um, let's put it this way, yeah. we have a leader that has mentored a lot of people, including the two gentlemen you have mentioned, mm -hmm. Lai and uh, Rahman. Yes. Uh, both of them have worked. Lai was chief of staff, mm -hmm. too, and uh, Rahman was in Lagos with us. He was uh, MD of First Fuels, and uh, they've interacted for a long time. We have and as you are you, who understands the dynamics of conflict resolution and harmony. Mm -hmm. He has resolved so many crises all over Nigeria, all over the parties. And for you to realize that even after a contentious primaries, mm -hmm. it might not be all over through yet, but the Senate president wrote to me, people have moved back into, you know, uh, Tien, Jack Rich, all of them have moved back into the system. So. Ashwaju has a capacity to be able to resolve these issues. And I think that uh, it's going to be resolved. Remember okay. that he said cr very crucial things about the Kwara State Governor now. Mm -hmm. He said to him that they have worked hard and the crowd, that crowd, whatever there is that in terms of harmony, I'm sure himself, lies people were there as well. Mm -hmm. 
because that crowd accommodated literally every segment of the party within Kwara State. All right, that's uh, quite interesting to note. But let's look at the things that were said at that campaign today in Ilori. Uh, let me quote the DG of the uh, APC Presidential Campaign Council, DG Simon Lalong, uh, the governor of Plateau State. He says, and I quote, it is our turn. If you chop alone, you will die alone. He did not chop alone. And that is why Emilokon is very, very important at this time. And he also hey. followed up, he said, he said it in the tripartite way, the trilogy. Emi Lokan, Awa Lokan, uh, right. so he meant that, interpret that, I have asked that, all those who speak Yoruba, mm -hmm. I asked them at the earlier stages. Emi Lokan is, it is my turn. Mm -hmm. That was the slogan and the mantra for the primaries. Yeah, but After that part is not even what I'm concerned about. The chop. Yeah. You know, it is our turn. If you mm. chop alone, you will die alone. That is to say that... that, that yeah, is, what exactly that does that say, mean? That is to say that you will run an in inclusive government, putting everybody as much as possible into the system. And remember, it was here, when I did the first interview sometime back after the primaries, and we mentioned that Tinubu will go after all of the candidates and go and visit them. He visited each one of them. He went to their abodes. He went to them. The one aspirants. The aspirants yes. that contested with him. Mm -hmm. Even two days ago, the vice presidential candidate, Kashim Shatima, went to see Godzilla Pabio, went mm -hmm. to see Rocha Sokorocha. It's all in the business of let's work together. And that harmony. Is it really just about working together? Or is it a case of where, I mean, what you heard the PDP spokes. Uh, person there, uh, Charles Anyagu, you know, actually tell Nigerians, Nigerians must stop uh, Tinubu, don't vote for slavery. And he also refers to state capture. Um, whether you like it or not, Tinubu went into Lagos to do a major assignment. He was coming under a structure where he believed he wanted to pick as many bright brains as, and he made sure he went into places like Suruleri, brought out the Bajabia Millers, brought out from every part of Lagos. That's not a dictator. That's not somebody who eats alone. He brought out, I mean, whether it's an Afiku Yomi or Bani Koro, Mamura, all those people, Benaka Boise, that's not somebody who captured the state because he brought so many families, so many families to eat with him. Now, that I find a little bit, um, I'm not going to go that way of trying to find out whether he kept. The fact is that we should all look at what he did for Lagos State. Lagos State, as we speak now, makes 51 billion naira every month internally generated revenue. That doesn't happen overnight. You build a structure. Lagos State provided platforms for Dangote to build his refinery in Ekwe. Lagos State has built a new mini Dubai at Eco Atlantic. That's not somebody who's capturing the state because the number of businesses alone. Lagos State has done an elective free trade zone that will become one of the major hubs of employment for people. That's not somebody who's You make it sound about. like a, this is all a function of Tinubu as the owner of Lagos. Because Tinubu that we know was last governor some 16, 18 yeah, years ago. Yeah, so are you correct? Are you reiterating the facts or, or you know, the analogy? People say uh, he's a kingmaker and he has installed several governors after him because when you say Dangote Refinery, when you mention all of these things, yeah. Tunubu was once governor. Yeah. Why are you saying he's still very much in control of Lagos? Because there's a blueprint that is 25 years old. Is it his old. blueprint? That blueprint, not his. Um, Professor Oli Koyoran Somkuti, late Minister of Health, was, was a member of, the twi of a 30-man committee that was made to create that, the same way we were doing Vision 2010, mm -hmm. Vision 2020. Mm -hmm. He did his own vision. And okay. he just made his inputs that this is the direction I want us to go. Mm -hmm. This is what, we want a free market economy. We want to be able to do X, Y, Z. We want to be able okay. to do X, Y, Z. That. Right. And that blueprint, at every opportunity, they hand over to the next governor. Okay. Let's talk about his chances. Uh, in Kwara State, which is situated in north central Nigeria, mm -hmm. what is the Bolatinibu's chance of, you know, winning in those six states, talking about Benue, Kogi, Kwara, Nasarawa, Nanja, and Plateau. I can conveniently tell you that what you saw today, let's start from Kwara State, um, the party that, if you heard all the speeches, in contrast to 
what they were talking about. He was talking about freedom. He talked about getting people to be free. He was talking about a particular family that had ruled Kwara State for a long time. Mm -hmm. That's what he was referring to. Mm -hmm. Now, what Abdraman has done in Kwara State brought out the crowd you saw today. Now, Kwara State, I can conveniently say, will be about 55-45 in favor of APC. Mm -hmm. Niger State... And the other 45 as well. 45 to who? In between <laughs> PDP and, okay. and, uh, and the rest. All right. Okay, now, now it, let's... Right. Okay, you are going we're to talking about on that. Yeah, no, just, just, yeah. just, yeah. I'll just Go briefly ahead. run through the North yes. Central. Yes. Niger State is a no-go area. Um, no other party has won uh, effectively. In, you can conveniently say the Niger State is... APC. Mm. Now, um, maybe, maybe Benue State will go to them. Maybe. Um, maybe. I want to so. Um, the Kogi that is confident, State. Maybe. Yeah, I think um, it's because there are certain things. The voting pattern over those years have shown that they are not exactly pro. There's, 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 there's a psychoanalysis about the way the voting pattern goes. Now, in the case of Kogi, it's going to be another 50-50. Mm -hmm. You have a governor that is dynamic and driven, but you also have a PDP in the eastern part of Kogi state that mm -hmm. is strong. Mm -hmm. The Kogi East Senator, where a lot of the huge population of the Igala tribe people are. Okay. Now, Nasarawa mm -hmm. was CPC at a particular time, even when the rest were PDP, mm -hmm. and that is the home of APC. All right, uh, so much to talk about, but let's uh, quickly before we let you the go. The rest of the zones. Uh, before we let you go, no, 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 no. Let's even <laughs> leave uh, the rest of the zones. The issue of uh, character, capacity, yeah. integrity, and all of that that is needed for the next president of Nigeria. There seems to be a you know some kind of question mark, not just on the person of uh, Bola Tinubu having been linked to you know. Uh, drug-related issues and all of that. And then, of course, uh, Atiku, uh, just uh, you know, a few days ago, there's been links of, uh, you know, well, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, putting their hands in the public teal and all of that. And the APC ran to town and said, look, Atiku must be arrested. EFCC, ICPC, do your jobs. Well, um, and the PDP is saying, it's a case of Kettle call calling the, the port black. Let me put it like this, um, yes. Ngozi, that matter has been taken to the, the agencies that are concerned, uh, ICPC, EFCC, and Code of Conduct, and I want to believe that they will do what they need to do to find out if there's any iota of through, sift through the shaft and get through. But in terms of that of the, president, the presidential candidate of PDP, the chances that border on character has to do again with whether you can trust somebody that becomes a mole or becomes a whistleblower close to you mm. and uh, whether your ability to have a judgment of the kind of people around you so it speaks to the quality of mentality of being able to understand the kind of people that are around you mm. but for us a whistleblower has gone to town and again it now put, casts a shadow of doubt of course you know there's a gentleman who also is the presidential candidate of another party. Panama Papers mentioned a lot about him. Malaysia mentioned about his own drug cases too. And who, who are you really referring to? Yeah, lost, <laughs> one of the three other candidates. One okay. of the three. One of the other candidates. You're apart not willing from to put APC. a name to it. Yeah, one of the three but, but other candidates. But can the same be said about, about your yeah. candidate? That's what, that's what we're saying. That mm -hmm. if we go that way, mm. more cracking will not take us anywhere. Right. We we won't go. We won't go far. So we you are, do agree that it's a distraction. It's. A, to a large extent. On both sides. The, on, I, I think that we should concentrate on the delivery of the messages and what to do and see how best we can get. For me, one of the advantages of my presidential candidate is that he's much more open. He builds people. He builds communities. And he's accessible. And you can count the number of people he has built. The gentleman... Yeah, he has built many people as... The gentleman people from the other party has not built yes, anybody. Right. None but, of those other ones. I can't count five people they've built. Let me mm. get this in very quickly. Of the number of people that Tinubu is known to have built, quite a number of them too have, you know, sort of like turned their back on him. No, no, no. What, what exactly is the problem? No, is I it, don't think so. Is it, a, is it a problem with Tinubu himself or these people that he's built? That no, I don't, think, maybe I, I don't think that they've turned their back. I can tell you that amongst the governors, Fashola is still with him. Ambode has repaired men mended fences. Um, Arabe Shola. Arabe Shola. Men in fact, he mentioned the other day that there are people who are denying him the effort to, 
to reconcile. Mm. So he's willing to. I don't think there's a problem with that. And it's not so much of a case of he will resolve these issues. Remember that at a particular time, there was even a mild issue with Akire Dolu mm -hmm. at the earlier stages. And they were resolved. Even fire me. Even at the point where people were provoking and pushing some of those candidates to run against mm. their, their, their mentor. Is he making mm. them an offer he, they cannot uh, refuse? I, uh, we I, heard I, from I Afeba Lawala who says that the highest bidder will win the next election. Uh, I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. Dala Dibako, uh, spokesman, of course, of the uh, APC presidential, presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> Thank us. You. My pleasure.